This is code.org. Let's see what we're doing. Create your sprites. First, create the sprite you'll, you will use in the, your program. You already have a player sprite right here, but you need to change its animation. Yeah, we do. So I said I was going to use, oh, kicks. Boop, and boop. Well, here, let me just search alien. Oh, they're already all okay. <gasps> Ooh, I like the ones with movement. Wait, no, nah, that one makes. Uh, mm, that's the one they were using. I wish that had movement. I can already tell I'm going to take way too time. Let me hurry. Uh, let's try. Uh, no. Mm. This is a big decision. Ooh. Well, maybe. No, no. All right. I'm going to do this guy. Floating alien. And then. So, create sprite. So now I just need to change this, this animation. I can leave it actually, the sprite name player, because it still makes sense. You'll need a player, the flyer, or target, the coin, and two obstacles, the rocks. Okay. I want to change all of these. Awesome, and we can. So I'm getting rid of you. Goodbye. Now, instead of a coin, what does my dude want? What does my happy alien want? I'm pretty sure it's going to be a burger, but let me, you know, let's double check the situation. You know, my alien loves to eat lemons. And then instead of a rock, oh, this could get violent. A wrench. I'm gonna go with the blender, cause why not? Life is short. So. Oh, but that relates to food. Okay, fine. Let's do something other than the blender. I want to keep it separate from the food item. Where's the hammer? It's a very dull bronze hammer. <laughs> Alright, um, and we can get rid of now. Goodbye, rock. rock. And goodbye, coin. So I'm going to be replacing everything. So now let me go over here and make sure I do... Oh, I won't need to yet, but now it's there. Oh, I'm probably getting ahead. All right. Uh, find the code game setup. Go to the animation tab and make sure you have the images you want. Great. The Yep. Create three more sprites, the target, and two obstacles. Okay. So to do that, I'm going to do var sprite. Set animation. All right. And then var sprite. Set animation. And then, so the target and two obstacles. So I'll need one more of these. Vara sprite and set animation. That is looking good. Just to keep it separated so you can see what I'm doing. This makes no difference in terms of code. I just want to have it here. Okay, now uh, they said the target and two obstacles. So by target, they're saying coin, I believe. Oh, they already gave us some code. Okay, that's fine. So I'll use this for the target. And my target, though, is lemons, so I might call it a reward in class. I normally would, but the lemon is the reward. Now, obstacle. Obstacle 1, I'll call this. I could even just do OBS1, right? Something like this. Uh, it makes more sense for me, though, if I do that. Obstacle 1, and what is that going to be? That will be the hammer. And then obstacle 2 will also be a hammer. Okay, let me make sure. Target, target, let's see. They're all going to be mashed together. Yep, okay. Set each sprite to the animation you chose. Scale one to the size you want. Okay. And again, I'm going to just space these out for us. You don't have to have that. Place them where you want, on and off the screen. And the coin randomly. Okay. Okay, so now first I want to scale. So keep in mind that scale in code.org, player.scale equals 0 0.5. So the scale property of 1 is 100%. 2 is 200%. So if I want a lemon or a target that is smaller, 0 0.5 would be 50% the size for my lemon. There we are. 0 0.3 is now it's just 30% and maybe something even this small. I'm going to stick with 25 for that. The hammer's looking all right. I'll scale it down still. Make that obstacle 2, and then make my player maybe 0 
Okay, now real quick, I want to compare the sizes with theirs. It's always good to look at their example. So look how big theirs is and their obstacles. Okay, so I'm definitely going to want my player to be larger than I have it now. So maybe 0 0.4. Okay, that's a bit better. I'll probably settle 0.35. Hammers are good. 200, sure for that. Hammer, I'm going to start on the left-hand side. So X would be over here like 50. So I'll put this one at 50. And then this one, I'm going to start towards the top, kind of like they do. So I'll start it slightly over on the X, but really high on the Y. And remember, zero at the top is Y. So I might even do, I don't know, negative 20, starting it a bit off the screen, keeping in mind that we will be making this full. Yeah, you see that? And then this, I want this on the left-hand side. Oh, I made the left, I made the limit on the left. Okay, I'll do that one then. And then the lemon will be random, so it doesn't super matter. But for now, I'll do... Yeah, let's just do 50-50, just to get out of the way. Boom. Okay, so here, here, here. Cool. We are looking good. I think that's all we needed for this one. Oh, wait, nope. Place them where you want on our other screen. Set the starting X velocity for of the obstacles. Oh, wow. Okay. So we don't want to put the starting velocity in the draw loop. And that's because we don't need to, right? We're going to set it and forget it. We don't need to change the velocity 30 times a second. And that's what happens. The draw loop runs 30 times a second. We don't need to change the velocity 30 times a second. So this one, which would be obstacle... I'm going to switch these because this is going to bother me. 200. And then this one will be our... One on up top. Okay. So this one will have an X. Velocity. Yikes, I can't have caps of, uh, well, let's look. X way here on the left is 50. X over here on the right is 330. So it needs to be positive. I would say maybe three. I'm not entirely sure what I would do. And now this needs to have a Y velocity that will make it fall. What will make it fall? Well, my mouse right now, look at this Y value is 18. Down here, it's 290. So we would need to add to Y to make it fall. So we need to give it a Y velocity that's positive. So let's try, I don't know, two again. Cool. All right. And maybe that we want them to be faster. So four and then probably four down here. Now, let me see something. Test your, the player and the target should be on the screen and the obstacles should start off the screen and move across. Oh, we need to start them off the screen entirely. OK, so let me put this at like negative 50 to start off the screen and this at like negative 50. Let's see if that gets them off the screen. Yep. And they're falling. Maybe we don't want them to cross paths. That's easy enough to uh, switch up, honestly. Like, you just start this one at negative 150, and then there. Boom, and boom. And we can mess with speeds as well. This is already looking cool. Awesome. Let's keep going.